Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on a uh, really exciting webinar that we have here with our partner, with our partner Paul Cardis from uh, On3. So we, uh, we really appreciate everybody joining the webinar today. We have members of the webinar and attendees that are in a number of different areas in our industry. So they, they are covering, you are all covering uh, custom home building, remodeling, semi-custom home building, production home building, and we even have trade contractors on the call right now. Um, so everybody on the call right now is, is in here hopefully to learn about, a, about how to have better communication to the field. And so we've worked with here at ECI, we've worked with Paul for uh, a number of years on different projects on helping our customers understand how to communicate better using visual uh, audio, visual type of technology. Um, this is an interesting industry. It's one where we move very fast and moving fast without the proper practice and training and uh, proper scopes of work of knowing exactly what we're going to do can be very costly to all of our businesses. Um, and that is in the, in the form of real dollars and time, which equates to real dollars. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, Paul, if you could introduce yourself uh, first and then we can go ahead and get started here. Great, yeah, great to be here with you, Bob, and, and the whole group here with ECI. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, we've known each other for many years, and, and I really value this uh, opportunity and relationship. So I've been in the home building industry for a number of decades, uh, working in the um, uh, customer experience realm. It's where I started my career. Actually, my father was a home builder, so I was been around this industry pretty much most of my life. Um, and then lately we got into, <clears throat> since 2020, uh, on three, which is basically a knowledge-based program to help the field representatives, field personnel, document all the things that they do out there in construction and be able to serve that up on a mobile platform. And so I know we're gonna dive into more details about that, but that's what I've been working on now for the past four plus years now, and excited to share with you what we've been doing. That sounds great, Paul. Why don't we, uh, why don't we go ahead and jump into some of the, the content-rich things that you wanted to talk about with your presentation, and then uh, we'll kind of jump in as. Sounds good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right in here, folks, and and Bob, you just go ahead and interrupt me as you have questions or anything that comes up. Please feel free to uh, just let me know and, and pop pipe right in. All right, so we should have the PowerPoint up and going there. If you can't see that, uh, Kathy or Bob, just let me know, but I think we've got it up on screen. So what we're gonna talk about here today is video-based scopes of work. And, and um, when we talk about uh, this whole area of video, it really is, is transforming our world today. And, and what we wanna talk about is how you can capture your processes out there in construction in video and really transform your teams. Um, this, is, this is a big deal. And, and in fact, this is what we do at ON3. We're, we're, we're specializing in this and today, we are the leading learning technology platform serving frontline and field employees across the construction industry. And we have clients ranging from, you know, top 10 publicly traded home builder doing, you know, tens of thousands of homes a year down to, you know, custom builder doing three homes a year and even trade contractors. Now we have a number of trade contractors. Uh, we just signed a commercial landscape company here just last week. And we work with framers, electricians, plumbers, variety of different trades out there and so because we're all we're all in this together right and we have to document what we do and and get this knowledge in the head of our teams and and this is this is not an easy thing right because <clears throat> we've got a very difficult industry um a good friend of mine from years back uh, dr jack revell did a research study and jack's an interesting guy because he, he's actually a military nuclear scientist who somehow fell into home building don't ask me why but anyway jack out of, out of california um dr revell decided he wanted to count up how many points of failure there are in a single home that we build today and he racked up over sixty thousand points of failure in your average home this wasn't your custom high-end home this is a an average uh you know you know 2500 square foot on average home and so it's amazing the amount of, of things that can go wrong right <clears throat> in the construction realm why is that? Well, construction is constrained by, you know, we've got local building codes, which do vary, not even from county to county, but even city to city. 
was just talking to a client, you know, in this one particular city, you know, we've got a, uh, the way we do our driveways has got to be different, um, you know, because that's the way that town wants it done. And that differs, you know, from the next town over. And so we're dealing with an incredible amount of building codes. We've got over 7 million building products. Isn't that crazy? 7 million different things we can throw into a house today and growing, right? <clears throat> so there's an incredible amount of products that we have to manage. And then, you know, we've got this issue of a really poorly trained trade base right now. And, and frankly, even uh, lack of employees that want to enter the trade base. So both of these things really contribute right now. But the trade base is who are building the homes out there today. They represent 80% of the frontline workforce that's doing the work. And so this makes for an interesting problem, right? Here we have this incredible $300 billion industry we call home building. And, and that doesn't include the commercial side and the rest of it because there's even more money out there on that side. But we're, we're building these products. We've got all these different iterations. We've got teams that don't even aren't even direct employees that are often doing the work, and uh, somehow it all comes together magically, right? And so our clients today, and I think the industry today, really needs better systems. You know, we can leverage technology, we can do things differently to really support and educate our teams out there in what we do, because <clears throat> there's a lot. You know, some of you might be specialists in one of these categories, but these are just some of the categories. I didn't even list them all. But within each of these categories, there are countless things that we need to do right and that can go wrong. And when they do go wrong, can really mess up a job or and be very costly. Uh, but, you know, within each one of these, there's millions of different things that we have to manage. And so this is when, you you know, you think about really 60,000. Well, this is how you get there, right? Just just break down one of these and, and start counting up all the little details that have to be managed, right? And so there's a lot to handle here in this home building industry. And, and you know, a scope of work is really what we've been using in the past to manage this, at least from the builder perspective. You know, builders will draft what's called the scope of work. And, you know, it's a document, usually in Word, that they have. Sometimes you'll see them in Excel. Occasionally you'll see one on a cocktail napkin, but no, most of the time they're on, they're on Word or in Excel. And um, and they're really just to document exactly what we want done. And a lot of times this is driven out of the, the legal departments, right? You know, purchasing and legal will, will, will require that we have to have these scopes of work that if we're gonna go work for this builder, we're gonna have to agree to that scope of work and sign it. And it's good business practice. I'm not, I'm not knocking the scope. I think, you know, we gotta have these things, right? But the problem, and is that scopes of work are read probably twice in their lifetime. They're read when we, we hire somebody to do some work for us, and possibly they're read when we fire them, right? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately. And really, you know, that's that's about the the the, the use of these things. And um, but, and so our thought was like, well, why don't we really take this thing and make it something that's usable, right? On a daily basis something that we can reference quickly, easily, and really drive performance you know, off this and make sure that everybody understands it, not just the owners who are signing the contract. And so this is, this is really you know, the, the vision that we've had and, and really the topic of today's presentation is how do we get to that doing it differently, right? And because and, I think we can, right? I think we can utilize this incredible device that everybody has in their pocket. You know, granted, there still may be a few flip phones out there, but I guarantee, you know, I would say three quarters to 90% of your team, if not more, probably has, and I'm talking trade base on up, has a digital device in their pocket now. You know, 10 years ago, yeah, you know, probably not the case, but today, no doubt. So these things are ubiquitous, and, and now it's time that we start utilizing the, this great technology sitting in the pocket and, and start doing things differently, right? Because we can give these construction teams incredible reference material and information, and we can be more powerful utilizing this technology. And so this is the first step, really, is, is accepting that. Now, there are some concerns. You know, you might say, well, I don't want I don't want cell phones on my site. I don't want them, you know, getting injured. And, you know, you'll hear more on that. But as it sits today, most still allow them to have that. And therefore, it is a resource we can capitalize on. 
And the key thing that we're focused on is using video, right? You know, the old saying, uh, you know, picture tells a thousand words. Well, a video will tell a million words. And, you know, we think about like the YouTube phenomenon, you know, every time you, you, something breaks, you know, let's say you're, you know, your dishwasher's not working right, or maybe you want to change the filter in your fridge. We turn to YouTube, we turn to Google and YouTube to sit, catch a video, watch a video for two or three minutes, learn about, okay, that's where the, the filter's located. And you got to turn it to the left, not the right or whatever. And you quickly can learn these incredible uh, skills uh, in a in really short period of time and get back to work. And this is kind of that on-site or what we call workflow learning, where you're learning while you're doing, right? This is this is a phenomenon. We all, most of us have experienced this. And so we took that and said, well, how can we, you know, make that better and bigger? Because we don't want our teams going to YouTube necessarily, because they'll be wasting time and then they're watching, you know, clips of whatever. That's not what we want. We want a controlled environment that uh, it has vetted content, and if we can make video-based scopes work, this could be this could be great. So that's the idea, you know, is let's create videos now based on these scopes, right? And these would be mobile-based videos that are available on your phone or a tablet to share with trades in an instant, right? And the idea is that if we can quickly access these. Um, now we can use them out in the field and just like I'm trying to fix my dishwasher or fridge now you know I might be looking at how to do a California corner properly or ladder framing or whatever it is that we're dealing with and we're able to show them not just tell or yell right and this is a big deal because as as managers whether you're a trade contractor whether you're a builder um, it, you've got somebody overseeing it right and, and it's their job to make sure things are right and the crews are executing properly. Uh, when they can show those crews exactly the way, uh, this is how we install this, this is how we want it to look, this is how we we expect it to, you know, the flashing to go, all these little details that, you know, matter, now all of a sudden we can teach people right there in the field and get better results. But there's the other challenge too, is that, you know, not everybody's English speaking out there in the field, right? So we need to be available in multiple languages too. And so that can be a challenge. So if you're doing this yourself, which we highly recommend you do, uh, whether you're using a platform or doing it on your own, you need to do this because it's a game changer, but uh, you also need to have it in multiple languages, which is you know important because obviously if they can't understand it, it's not gonna go well. And you know one of the other things that's cool is that we're recording things on our company and this process of creating these various different modules will improve your business just by forcing your teams to start recording hey let's i want the ideal way we put in our, our concrete footers or i want to i want the best uh trade that is doing uh hanging our windows properly you know and the, the more you can capture this stuff uh the more you start to build a treasure trove of processes that will last in your company for many many years and will influence quality uh, in, in multiples. So this is, you know, the idea, and it's very important. And when the builders that are going live with this are seeing incredible results. So why do it differently? Hey, you know? hey, hey Paul, hey Paul, real, real quick. Yes, uh, we we had an interesting question. If we go back yes. to that previous slide, we had an interesting question that sure. I think may may help us um, with a with a conversation to support some of this. And and the question is um, just something that came to somebody's mind. Uh, you know, if, if we're talking about putting something out there that we believe may be proprietary, such as how to do a specific thing on one of our one of our jobs, on one of our houses, yeah. how do we think as builders, how do we how do we think about protecting ourselves, knowing the trades work for other builders and things like that? I mean, so what mm. what advice do you have for the group? I mean, is this are these scopes of work and these videos extremely basic? Are they things that maybe make you unique? I mean, where do you draw that line to protect yourself as a builder? Yeah, I'm, all the clients that I'm talking to, we're not worried about it because, look, you know, yeah, you're going to get so many different trade crews are out there. So if you're a big builder and you've got some proprietary processes, first off, yes, you're not putting it on YouTube. I, I don't recommend that. I don't think that's a great venue for putting your, your processes. So you definitely want something that's private. So step one, make sure that you have a control deal. And that's what we offer, obviously, for our clients. They're not sharing their stuff with others. Their stuff is theirs. And secondly, you, you also have to think about, like, you don't know who you're getting on the site. 
you could be getting the A crew, you could be getting the D crew, right? And you know, if you don't do this, then that that underperforming crew that's causing you lots of delays and costing you money, after a while, <laughs> that you know that becomes a very expensive thing. So you you just don't have a choice. You really have to start training those folks, and this is a great way to do it. Um, those trade crews might become better in their job, and yeah, that might carry over to your competitor. That's true, but you know, at the end of the day, one crew that's working on your sites isn't going to, I think, give away the farm. Um, and in the end of the day, I think as an industry, if you're doing it and your competitors are doing it, now all of a sudden we have a great trade base. Everybody wins there, you know. Everybody wins in our market that we're building better homes. Now, granted, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, you you've got to do other things to stay competitive, but having quality and everybody in town doing a good quality home doesn't hurt the market. It only helps because when we have a bad builder out there, it does hurt us all. You know, it, re it damages all of our reputations and it scares way buyers. I, I think a great quote is, "Our number one competitor isn't the builder across the street. It's actually the resale market." You know, 95% of all homes are re well. It used to be resale. Now it's changed. But we, I think, the latest number I heard is about 70% of home sales now are resale homes, and we're up to 30% new homes. Um, so we're, but we're still, you know, the bigger elephant in the room is the resale market. So, yeah, I, I just don't worry about that so much because you, you just have to do it. Yeah, and same same question now for a for a trade contractor uh, wanting to communicate out to their crews. Uh, this must be a state where they have 1099 crews um, tacking onto that question. You know, it, it kind of sounds, Paul, based on the way you answered the first one at the builder level, um, the old adage of, you know, what happens if we train our employees in our company and we spend all that time and we spend all that money and they leave, and then right. the the adage of, well, what happens if we don't, right? What happens if we don't train them? So it it seems yeah. like the answer would be similar. Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Right. You can't not train them because it's just too expensive. You know, the loss of clients, having poor customer experience and, you're, you know, losing a big builder client if you're a trade contractor. Yeah, that far outweighs the the whatever we'll call the lost expense in, in, a, in training somebody that doesn't stick with you. I'll tell you this, too. If you don't train your team members, you will lose your people. Right. You won't be able to retain them. That's a huge source of. Of, of losing people is the fact that they're not well supported. It's not that just the pay, but if they can't feel good that they're contributing and they're an expert in what they do, um, that they're confident in what they do, they won't enjoy their work. And if they don't enjoy their work, they're going to leave you. Yep. You know, go do something else. And so, yeah, I think I think we just don't have a choice but to to make them better. Yep. And I think you brought a good point up with with YouTube. I guess at the end we'll we'll hear a little bit about your product specifically as opposed to the best practices. And so putting out putting this to, out to the world on YouTube is probably a little different than doing it in a protected portal. So probably more to come on this one, right? Right. Well, the biggest challenge, I'll go back to my previous slide. You know, we've got uh, you know, uh, 3500 co-jurisdictions, 7 million building products. You do the math. Um, YouTube isn't going to cover that real well. You might get a YouTube video, but is that the YouTube video right? Is this the way you want to do it? The answer is probably no. So unfortunately, in our business, we're so complex, um, we need to have our own systems. You need to be building your own warehouse of knowledge, that, and that's where the value of your business grows. Yep, yep. All right, great. Thanks for answering that, Paul. Yeah, no worries. And great questions. Keep them coming. And so, you know, why do this differently? And I think that's, that's a perfect segue, you know, because we haven't been doing this. And so, and these are good good challenges and why well, why do we have to change? Well, well, let's talk about it. I mean, the mobile experience, digital experience is transforming everything, right? We don't even order a pizza the same way, right? We used to call on the phone, you know, and, or, you know, look it up in the yellow pages for us old folks. But uh, but not anymore, right? It's it's all about you know you get out that mobile and why? Because it's faster, it's better, it's more efficient, and and that means money. And so why aren't we managing our sites more with mobile devices? Um, I have some clients that are even purchasing their own their company devices for their employees, and those devices are locked down to only the things they want them to have. And so there are some companies that haven't even gone that far. But to to not have your teams mobile enabled. Can be uh, can be challenging for you to stay competitive. 
Uh, and the idea is, you know, we can now serve up hundreds of different micro-learning opportunity, micro-learning videos, scopes, whatever you want to call them, and these can be for quick reference, right? So if they have a question, oh, I didn't know, and so that's why I installed these last 40 houses the wrong way. Yeah, that's that's not good, right? We want them to be like, hey, you're not sure? Go to your phone. You check it out. It's all there, and boom, they can go watch a quick video, get it. Okay, this is how I do this thing, and they can do it right, save you time and money, and the other big piece, too, is that it's changing so fast, right? And what you're doing in one town may be different in another town. So your managers, your superintendents, whether you be a trade contractor, whether you're a builder, um, you can empower those to start making new videos. And it's not just about the good, it's really about the, the bad too, like the wrongs. Uh, we call those lessons learned, you know, and when we do screw up, capturing those things, not to throw somebody under the bus, but to, basically create a, a quick little scope about this is not how we want to do it. We have actually found, we've got, a, I'm going to show you one of those here in just a few minutes. And it's worked really, really well. Um, and this is how we drive problems out of the organization. And so having this has to be bottom up, you know, traditional uh, scopes and, and learning have been what we call ivory tower top down, you know, someone from corporate or some building science experts, you know, are creating this content, it sort of filters down, right? Now we've flipped it on its ear, and now we're basically saying, now we're, we're driving it all up. Your field teams and leaders out there, those are the ones that have all the knowledge. And if they start capturing this for you, you start to put all that in a bottle, and you become, you start putting lightning in the bottle now because you can be so much faster and better than everybody else. And you can share this, and this is the key in multiple languages, and, and really drive execution. You know, competency equals performance. If everybody is very competent and understands exactly what we like to do, what we want to do, what's the right way um, in, in your company and in this area, um, yeah, you're, you're going to see the performance go through the roof, just like a sports team, right? If they don't know the plays, you're not going to win. But if they know, then they're going to win really, really well. And, you know, the benefits of this is, is huge. And um, educating the trades in the field allows you to target these issues, as I was alluding to. And so if you're having problems with this, you know, you would come back for rework or or, uh, or even warranty calls. Uh, those are the things you want to target in this thing. And what also you want to make sure that you're maintaining and checking in with your teams to make sure they remember these scopes. Because this is the other thing we forget. It's just human nature. It's the way the brain works. It can't remember all everything. So it starts to unload some of this stuff and we need to refresh it. And you can come back and, and represent this stuff. And more importantly, it's always available in their pocket so that they can refresh themselves on, okay, how do I do this again? All right, I can watch that video, bang, go back to work. And so this is a really important uh, uh, part of how this whole process works. And you know, one of the things, actually, let's go ahead and take a step back here. I wanted to show a video. Where did I put that? I know I put it in here somewhere. But you know, one of the things that people are often afraid of is, you know, how I do this. And uh, we'll take a look at one here in just a minute that that we did. Actually, I think it's the next slide. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this scope of work. So this is put together with a client of ours. They did it themselves, and and we'll talk about the tips here in a minute. Walked into the house today and found something that we need to address and uh, wanted to do that with a video. So if you bear with me here, we will run through some issues that we have with uh, an item frequently in our houses. I've been traveling between many. So I'll just stop it there. Um, and uh, so he's going to point out something that he did. You can see he's just using his cell phone. He's talking to it and be able to generate some amazing content you know, where we're going to get into looking at details of the home and, and what went right and what went wrong and how we're going to fix all that and how we're going to prevent it going forward. And so this is an amazing homegrown uh, scope of work. And so, you know, some tips, though, that, you know, we can look at here. You know, one of the things that we um, recommend when you're going to get out there and do some mobile video capture is turn your phone horizontal. He added vertical, which is fine. It works. But, and if you forget, no problem, but you'll get a much wider angle and it'll look better if you turn it horizontally. So, um, so that's kind of one of our key recommendations if you're gonna get out there and do some videos. 
sound is an important uh, is visuals, right? Use uh, mobile lab mics if you can. Um, we're going to recommend some technologies that you guys can use. They're not that expensive. You can get it on Amazon. Um, but if you just have a, even a simple wired mic, you know, if you have a wired earbud or even the wireless earbuds work really, really well so that you get quality sound. Now, that was good news on that one is he didn't have any background construction going at that time, so it was easy to hear him. So his cell phone worked just fine. Uh, but in some cases, you're going to be, you know, you're going to get a lot of noise in the back. And so this is where having that mic will isolate the sound and focus on the speaker versus what's happening behind them. Um, you know, once a video is done, the other thing is to take still pictures. That's another key recommendation. Close-ups, but you don't have to do it while you're taking it. Just do your thing. Talk and walk and show what you would do just like you would if you were training an individual, right? There's really no difference. Um, you're just doing it in front of the camera. And then when you're done, you can come back and, and grab a few uh, close-ups of what you're showing there. Like he got up close and showed that top plate and, and the mending strap that was up there and the mending plate. Um, and get in there and, and get those details. And, and another key tip, this comes from Clay, who Clay Lonnie is one of our co-founders. He's a, a former newscaster and he heads up our media division. Um, but mention things in groups of three and then stop the recording and then pick it up again for the next three. You don't need to do all your videos in one take. You can fix all this stuff in post. And when we say in post, meaning once you go to editing, you can stitch stuff together. So you don't, it doesn't have to be a one and done, you know, uh, where you're doing the whole thing. Cause let's face it, we're not professionals. And, um, and, and so it's easier if you can just kind of put in your mind the three things you want to talk about, then hit stop and then do a second recording, continue your thoughts at that point. And that makes it a lot easier to sort of step along one, two, three, stop, one, two, three, stop, one, two, three. And then you can put together a real nice video. And one of the other tips that Clay provides too is explain the what we are going to do, why we're going to do it, and how it can be done right and wrong. And if you can just cover off on those three things, you're going to be putting together an amazing scope of work because you know the work, right? And your best people, they do this every day. This is what they do. So they know it like the back of their hand. And so just putting them in front of the camera and letting them go with these tips and you're going to have some amazing content. So I'll kind of stop there. Any questions out there, Bob, that you're, you're getting from the group? Uh, none on, none on this slide or to this topic yet. All right, real good. So let's move on to kind of some recommended film equipment that, you know, can really help you in getting this done. So if you want to take it up a notch or two, you can you can buy some equipment that will make it a little bit easier, get your production quality up. But by all means, you don't need this. OK, I mean, I, I'm out there with my phone. I don't have any of these things and I can produce stuff and it looks really great. But for a lot of folks, you know, you do want to take it up a notch. You can. So they make a what's called a small rig phone cage. And again, uh, I'll make this PowerPoint available, but you guys can copy those links and or go out there. This basically allows you to stabilize your phone. Um, and uh, it makes it very easy so that it, you know, you can grab it more stable and you can attach all your different uh, accoutrements to it, as you'll see here in a minute. It makes for a nice setup. Um, the second is probably should have been first because this one's really important is the two wireless mic set. Now, this is really important. Um, it's not, it's not that bad at $3.99. There are cheaper ones you can get and they work fine too. Um, there's sub 100 models, but this one gives you the best quality. But anyway, the idea is that, you know, you've got to have good quality sound. And especially if you're doing like tandems, which often we do. Um, so where we're basically interviewing somebody or you're interviewing one of your best guys, that's another great way to do it. Each one of you clips on a lav mic and you can talk and all of that's going to be captured beautifully um, without any hassles. So that's something, and they're wireless, so you don't have to worry about cords getting all tangled up and the rest of it. Just clip it on, make sure it's connected to the phone, and away you go. So that's a very highly recommended there. And then the third one is important, light. Because we're in homes, and a lot of times these homes aren't powered. They're not lit. And so when you're trying to do a recording with your phone, sometimes it can get dark and it doesn't look very good and can't see. So having a little light on top of that, rig can also make sure you've got good quality light, you got good quality sound, you're in business. And you guys can start just going and recording a whole bunch of stuff. 
you know, so for some companies, you know, your key managers, your key folks out there that are really enjoying doing these and, and digging in, you get them this equipment and empower them. Again, it'll pay many, many times over with all the savings and the quality of learning that you're going to get post. Paul, quick question. Um, yeah. So uh, a lot of us have uh, superintendents that have been in the business for, for a long time. Um, sometimes technology is a little bit of a challenge. Do you mm -hmm. run into uh, customers that have that situation? And uh, what is the success rate of getting the people with the most knowledge that have been doing this for 25 or 30 years to, to do this? What, what have you seen? Yeah, well, the answer is yes. Every client, almost every client I reach is, uh, is has that problem. So this is this is the industry. We're not we're not media producers, right? So this is foreign, and especially for our veteran folks out there, you know, they weren't growing up with social media and, and cell phones in their hands. So I get it. Um, the answer is pair them with a the younger younger folk that get this whole thing that are doing social media there are really you know not afraid of the tech and then let them record the veteran out there and let them be the, that's the tandems and that works really really well and that kind of so they don't because yeah you can get sort of tangled up in the tech and it can be intimidating and frustrating want to make sure that they don't have that experience so pairing them up with somebody younger will definitely um, be great and it's an opportunity for them to talk and remember you're not we're not trying to win academy awards all we're trying to do is capture what we're doing you know, and you saw the one we did, you know, it's homegrown, just talking to the camera and going and, and uh, but incredible value that saves the company. I like to say not six figures, seven figures. When you start amassing your scopes, we've done the math and we're actually seeing over seven figure returns for our, you know, obviously larger companies. Um, and, and that's huge, right? So this is, the juice is worth the squeeze on this for sure. Uh, next question is when the when people consume these videos, are they typically consumed in the field or are they consumed at their desk or offsite? Do you have the ability of seeing that with your customers? Well, we see them in the field for sure. In fact, our platform enables that. And so um, we're big on on that. And that's the whole point. Right. It, it, if they have to watch them later, it, that, that that's still helpful, but um, not as helpful if I'm staring right at it and I watch a video and I can go right back to it and get the thing done. Or I'm managing a trade contractor, I see them installing it wrong and I pull it up on my phone and I put it in front of them and say, hey, guys, this is how it's supposed to go. And I can share it with them in their native language, in Spanish, for example. That's an incredibly powerful moment while they're there, while they're doing the work, while they're putting that tile in, you know, and they're using cardboard instead of proper spacers or whatever the issue is. Being able to catch that in the moment is just golden. So that's the whole point, why we, we're really turning to the mobile device to, to be the, the, the distribution channel. But ours, the system does work as well on computers. And yes, they can learn great at home, at night, whenever. So the point is, it's always on and always available. All right, a couple more questions just came in. So let's do one more now. Uh, do you recommend pairing the videos uh, with signed written scopes? Let's just kind of stop there for the first part of the question. Yeah, so I do. That's the point, you know, is you take your written scopes and we pair that up with a field version of it. Man, you got gold, right? Now you got best of both worlds because we, I'm not saying throw away the scopes. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, they are important. There is a legal and, and important contractual reason why we have written scopes of work, and I get that. You need those, but we also need these types of videos so that everybody has access and everybody understands because unfortunately only the owner or uh, senior leadership are signing and reading those scopes, right? Everyone else is, you know, it's unknown to them or foreign. You, know, you hope not, but that's the reality of the business. But pairing these up together is absolutely the way to go. And then now you can have your formal written scope. And you may not put everything in your written scope in the video. There are details when we've done them, we go through and highlight the big stuff, right? The key stuff. There's other subtle things that may not make that video. Why? Just because it gets a little lengthy. Some scopes are really, really detailed. We may not have every bit and you know, bit part in there, but you can have all the big stuff and the highlights in that video, the stuff that's really costing you money and the stuff that we're having a lot of pain around, that, that's the things you have in those videos. 
put them together and now you're really starting to, to tame the tiger as we like to say so it sounds like you need to probably have somebody making sure that you don't have a conflict right you don't want to be doing videos in the field that conflict with the initial scope so we need to make sure that those people yeah. understand the scopes right yeah that's probably one of the biggest challenges is getting it right right and um and so uh, this is when i said you're going to learn a lot about your company when you start setting people loose um often you'll get a bunch of videos back and you're like that's not how we do it <laughs> and that's happened quite a bit you know uh won't name names but it's happened and uh and they're like well then that's, that's how they're doing it and so now we start having a discussion about you know what's the right way uh and and that's a good discussion because you, you, you can't just sit you know bury your head in the sand on that we need to discuss it and come to an agreement and and you may discover there's a better way and you're going to change the company process or maybe you're going to correct how the field's doing it and they're going to do it you know better way per corporate or whatever but having that that you know vetting process very important so as these things come in they don't just go live they need to be reviewed Need to be reviewed by you know your, your head of construction. You may want to review them with your uh, with your suppliers, right? Your building product manufacturers. They want to come in and say, you know, we, and we do that a lot. We've actually now have building product manufacturer sponsored videos so that our clients can pull those videos off the shelf and make them their own. Um, and they know that okay, this is building product. This is the manufacturers recommended installation and we can follow that um but you know in the end of the day you're going to have to review the stuff coming in make sure it's right and then you can push it out great questions in fact right. let's take, you have another one bob or otherwise i want to show you guys a more detailed scope that we put together let's let's jump into the more detailed scope there's quite a few questions coming in and then we'll break again all right, so to this point, I showed you just a quick little snippet of our client one there, just to kind of give you a feel for it. And, and uh, But now I'm gonna share with you a detailed one. This one we did on cabinet installation, and we did it for our client. Now on kitchen cabinet work, when you come on site, you're checking on the progress, a few things to keep in mind. Number one, cabinets must be attached with cabinet screws solidly to uh, studs or other framing members. Take a look, make sure it's level. Across the front like this, right on target, and from front to back. Very important to check on the back side, make sure there's no gap between the back of the cabinet and the wall. No gap is permissible. Look up top. Tops of the cabinet drawers need to line up horizontally. They're right on the mark here. Open up a drawer or two. Take a look at where they put in the cabinet hardware some of the hardware is installed some of the holes are just there check for the hole though this is a clean hole here a little bit of a blowout it's not enough of a problem here but some of them are big if it's a large blowout and it's on the contractor to either repair that or replace it so the cabinet level is checked throughout the process right now they're using a laser level shooting across this they found that this side over here one side is right on the money it's at the same level the sink cabinet over here but it dips down on this side about a thumb's width so right now they're shooting it up making sure this is level before they continue with the installation so he's doing a final check final measurement here to make sure that the island comes out just right square against the cabinets will be holding the sink they put the shims in place now that it's level ready to screw it into the, the flooring so it doesn't move. As project manager, first things first, you check the plan. Make sure they have the right cabinets. That includes the right color. All this is looking good. You're good to go with this one. See what they're doing here? They're making sure that cabinet is sitting flush against the wall. They have the level in place every step of the way. And again, they'll be securing this with cabinet screws to the studs and to each other. It is the contractor's responsibility to set and adjust all doors and drawers. Make sure they open smoothly. This one's looking good. They're working properly. Remember to provide and install all hardware as specified. Place any molding as required. 
And then, of course, you got to put in all those nail holes. Make sure to take a look at your cabinet faces, that they're lined up. This is perfect here. Let's move on down. Right here. It's a little different. It's a little bump. That's okay, though. As long as it's not more than 1 16th of an inch difference, you're fine. If the homeowner chooses laminate tops for the kitchen, it is to the cabinet contractor to install those. Laminate will be on the top and also along the sides. And over here, a four inch backsplash. But make sure you're checking with the homeowner selection sheet and double check that that's what the homeowner wants. The contractor would be responsible for any additional cutouts, perhaps for a, a cooktop unit right here. When he's done, he would then wrap all the. It's perfect for the homeowner. The cabinet contractor is responsible for installing any cultured marble in the bathrooms, making sure it's securely fastened, plumb, and one eighth inch level from back to front. Once this is down, make sure it's protected. Cardboard needs to be put in place and then taped down. One thing to look for under the sink is the cutout for the piping. When the discussion is put around the pipe, there should be no evidence of this cutout. It needs to cover it entirely. As you see, there's a pretty large gap on this side. So this is going to be close. If the back of this cabinet has been miscut, it would be up to the contractor at install to reskin it. All right. So there you go. So that was a very detailed one. We'd often will break that one up. So this is, you know, you can have it in groups of sections. But here it's all contained in one so that this can be given and shared with cabinet folks to sit down and watch this and, and really remind them of all those details in that scope. So this one is a really comprehensive one, but covered the scope pretty darn well. In fact, when we made this, we used the scope of work and identified, as you can see, there was, you know, well more than a dozen different things that we needed to check off on that scope, and we covered that in video here. But, you know, imagine having to read all that, you know, you get to sentence number two and they're already gone. But at least with the video here, <clears throat> it's engaging and they can follow along. I also really love the fact that we had the participation of our trade contractor in to show us. And uh, so you want to get permissions for that when you do film your trade contractors, make sure that you do get written permission with them that it's okay. Ask them, of course, first. All of them we've run into are very open to it and, and actually quite excited that they can help and participate in this way. All right, so Bob, questions? So if someone does not have scope of work in place today, do you recommend that they take the time to write the scope of work prior to making the video? Mm, good question. You know, um, <clears throat> that's the first time I've been asked that. Most of our clients all have them. I, can't, I don't know of any that didn't, but the point here is that, yeah, you definitely want to have something in place. I think you need to at least make an outline of what you're going to cover. But if worse came to worse, you know, get out there in the field and just start capturing the process with the trade as a starting point and, uh, and making note of the things you would expect, you know, as a leader and owner, the things you expect that trade to do. But if you don't have things well-defined, then obviously, you're, you know, whoever's doing that work has a lot of freedom to do it the way they want to do it. And uh, and we all know how that works out, right? So I definitely recommend you, you begin this process, whether it's in writing or whether you use video and jump right to video and just start documenting stuff, you, you need to do it. Okay, great. Um, and then um, do you have any advice for the group in regard to um, covering their risk, such <clears throat> as OSHA? So, for example, um, using hard hats, eye protection, those types of things, since they're going to create these videos. Yes, that's a really great point. You know, um, we actually have an OSHA safety series now. Um, and so we're uh, we're actually, you know, you can pull that down and utilize it. But if you're going to film, <clears throat> yeah, I would recommend the proper PPE is very important. Um, you know, I, I've never seen OSHA come in and say, hey, we saw you on video. Here's a fine. But. I guess that's always a possibility, but it's always a great practice and you need to be, you know, we need to do a better job in residential. We don't do as good of a job on PPE as we should. Um, so I highly recommend it. And it'll just make, you know, cover your bases. It's not expensive. It's not hard. You know, make sure we at least have the basics in play. Great. Any other legal issues that the group should be aware of based on your experience, if they're going to go forward and make these videos on their own? 
Yeah, well, we talked about the consents. Make sure you get the consent. Um, make sure you're following that. The other big thing that I get often is that builders are afraid, as this is from builder now. So on the builder side, they're afraid to do these because they're saying they're worried about the liability concern. And it's very real. I've had many conversations with different attorneys at different companies about it, and we've got our attorneys involved, and everybody's had big powwow about it. But the bottom line is that <clears throat> there is some risk for a builder who starts to define the actual installation process. Um, you'll note that in our scope, we talked about expectations. We talked about you know what we were using, but we didn't say you had to use a laser level. If they don't want to use a laser lever and they want to do it some other way, you know, that's fine. <clears throat> Again, we're not defining the actual um, specific installation, but we're, we're defining the expectation here. And so that's one of the big things you, you can also protect yourself as a builder uh, in that you're defining what you expect from the final product and the final result and what that should be and what it should look like. And your trades and your building product manufacturers are going to carry the liability on the product and the installation. And so that is a, often a big deal. Um, if you want to talk more on that offline, we can get into the legal ramifications, but that seems to be the bright line that we hold to and that there's no no risk in you defining what you expect. You're already doing it anyway. You're doing it in your scope of work. So why not do it in a video and make it clear for everybody? So that's the often the biggest objection I get on the legal. Otherwise, you know, the other tips are <clears throat> make sure you have consent and uh, and then um, make sure that if you're working with a third party to do this, that they respect your, your content and they make sure that it stays yours. Great. Okay, that's great, Paul. Um, some of the other questions that are in here, I think, are people that want to learn more about uh, how it works if you do it and your company does it and your product. Okay, well, very good. We'd love to talk to them. And let's just end here on just a couple of last slides and then we can open it up for a more uh, open discussion. And then I have a link in the end here as well that you can schedule a meeting and I'll be happy to connect with you um, independently and, and review your company and what we can do. But the other big thing is you can make all these scopes, okay? And this is terrific for your company to lay that foundation. But if you don't take the last step, which is the execution, you can, you can get into some trouble. And so we're incredibly uh, bullish on the idea of assigning modules as well, assigning scopes. And you have to assign, you have to uh, make sure that you're tracking. So if you've assigned, you've said, okay, hey, building product uh, or building uh, uh, manager <clears throat> or trade contractor, we really want you to watch this. You need to track that they've done that. And then the last piece is to confirm. So we call it the ATC model, assign, track, and confirm. So we assign that they've they've watched it. We assign, we we track that they've done it, um, and we even have a competency tests to confirm that they actually understand it. And uh, and we may even come back and check on them over time. So we'll often we'll look at our our warranty reports and we'll say, oh man, you know we're having problems with cabinets again. Look at this. We've had X number of callbacks and whatever, or maybe our customer service scores are down on this area. And we'll then re, um, we'll, we'll reconfirm, we'll maybe send a, what's called a check-in to the employees out there and, um, and have them confirm that they understand all the major points that we do in, in putting this product together. And those that don't get it right, they go back and retrain. Those that get it right, we're good. Um, <clears throat> and so this whole thing is sign, track, confirm, very important. And making sure you have a way to kind of gather all this and, and run some graphs and things like that so that it makes it easy for you to know what's going on. Very, very important. Otherwise, you know, you'll build a lot of this stuff and then it kind of basically, you know, doesn't get used as much if you're not being proactive with it. And so the last thing I want to leave you with is a little case study. So this is one of our clients and they've given us permission to share this publicly. And this is the first public debut of actually this video. So I'm going to go ahead and share this with you here. Hi, I'm Ryan Marshall. CEO of Bolting Group. As we continue our legacy of innovation and dedication to excellence, I'm thrilled to introduce our newest tool for growth, Bolting Group University. Developed in collaboration with On3, a global provider of technology-based learning solution, this app-based training program embodies our commitment to the Pulte difference, ensuring that every home we build resonates with care and precision. 
Imagine having decades of home building wisdom, insights, and best practices right at your fingertips. That's the power of Pulte Group University. But I want to emphasize something vital. This isn't just about accessing information. It's about immersing yourselves, embracing continuous learning, and honing your skills to be the very best they can be. Your dedication, your drive for excellence, and your commitment to growth are foundational pillars of Pulte Group. As you dive into this learning journey, I encourage you to share your feedback, insights, and experiences. Together, we'll ensure that Pulte Group remains at the forefront of being considered the most respected home builder in America. The future of our company lies in our collective dedication to growth and innovation. So welcome to Pulte Group University. I encourage you to make the most of this incredible tool because at Pulte, we don't just build homes. We build incredible places where people can live their dreams. So really honored that they um, uh, recognize this with that. And, uh, and then lastly, I'll just leave you with this here and we can open it up for questions as well. But if you want to schedule a call to explore this further, you can uh, do a quick scan of that uh, QR code and that will take you to my meeting link and you can grab a time or just save the link if you want to book later. Um, feel free to do that. Also, I'll give you my email as well. You can just shoot me an email. Uh, it's real easy. It's paul at on3.ai. <clears throat> paul at on3.ai. <clears throat> so feel free to reach out and, and uh, I'll be able to work with you individually. You remember that you know when we work with our clients, everything is customized. We even have a film team that can come out. So we didn't talk about that. Again, I wanted to just share what we're learning as we're doing this all over the country now. Um, but we do have our film teams that can come out and they'll actually do the filming for you. They'll teach you how to do it while they're there. So we teach you how to fish, not just hand you the fish. And uh, and so usually after a couple of sessions or you know a couple of days out there, uh, your teams are feeling really good and they and they start getting them. And we're getting now videos in our system daily. I mean, daily, they're coming in from all over the country in different parts and uh, and everything that's submitted through our system remains yours. We don't, we don't abscond or take any of your content, it's yours. You can use our system and if you, you know, for whatever reason, move on, you take your content with you and it disappears. So, um, and we built a library as well. We're, we're like Netflix sort of, we're going out there making a bunch of content like you saw with Clay earlier on the cabinets. We're making a bunch of those scopes too so that our clients can say, you know what, that's pretty close to what we do. We're gonna take that. Or sometimes they'll say, you know, the first half works, second half doesn't, and we can customize it and edit it, which has been very helpful. All right, so I'll stop there and Bob, maybe we can open it up to the remaining questions. I'll stop the share so we can see each other again here. Hopefully that worked. Sure. And see how that goes. There we go. Yeah, so if we are a builder that is not the size of Pulte, um, what are the benefits of using your program versus doing it, as you mentioned earlier, with our own cell phones? Yeah, we've got, like I said, we've got companies that have three employees, you know, small contractors, um, custom builders, remodelers, all the way up to the big builders. So that just happened to be our big builder um, story, but we work with really all sizes. And yes, it is important. You know, if you're a small company, you can't be everything to everyone. You can't be everywhere. As you grow, more people are going to have questions. They're going to be, your phone's going to be just buzzing off the hook. So having this, the sooner you start, the, the better your life's going to be. You know, my father was a builder for 40 years. He had the heart disease at 57 and, and ended up getting four bypasses. I swear if he would have done this, you know, it might have added years to his life, really, you know, because he was constantly busy, constantly, you know, dealing with the same thing. We used to tease, you know, he had to pull the string on the back of his neck like a, a ventriloquist, you know, and repeat, you know, all the things that he would always say. And so having this system is going to free you up, you know, as owners of, of any business, that has field workers. The more you document, the more you make it self-serve, the easier your day is gonna be. So yeah, you can do this and you can get started. All right, so question about how they can uh, make software training part of this curriculum. 
Yes, great question, right, Bob? Because we created some ECI modules. So, by the way, we are we have a bunch that are in there, and we want to make a bunch more. So, um, whether it be Bolt, whether it be uh, the various different softwares that you have, um, you can do that as well. In fact, we've partnered with a group that uh, has a, a software that you can record your screen on the on the uh, computer. And then that can go right into the on three system. So whether you're doing software, whether you're you're hanging drywall, it doesn't matter. We we can capture it all. Great. All right. That was the last of the questions of the group. So just to just to clarify, I, I thought this was a fantastic overview, Paul. Um, I mean, I I I know that from talking with uh, builders and trade contractors that you work with today. They've uh, they've let us know. They've let me know that this was a game changer for them. So I I fully endorse and support this. I mean I I definitely bring it back to what you said earlier. This is the playbook. And teams that are really really good in whatever sport you want, look at them. They run the same plays over and over and over again, and they get really good at them. And they have they have playbooks that everybody knows. So this is this is fantastic stuff. It's taking it's taking video. It's taking knowledge. It's taking AI. It's doing a lot of really cool things here to really help teams take it to the next level. So thank you for, for doing this for our customer base. We appreciate you. Any closing uh, statement or advice or anything for the attendees before we hit the top of the hour here? Well, I'd like to say that, you know, we're, we're in it for the long haul. You know, there's a lot of technology companies that uh, come and go, but, you know, I've had 31 years now in the home building space. And, and this one is really by far the one I am enjoying the most. Um, and and we're here we're here to stay. So um, you know uh, been been in this industry for a long time and and uh, and we really felt this was a, a missing piece uh, and that's why you know decided to come back and and try to get it done. And yeah, it's been hard and 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 it's not going to be easy for everybody. This is this is work. You know, this isn't just you know instant fix. You got to put some time in. You got to put some money into it. But we are affordable. And uh, and more importantly, we've really made it easy for you guys, as easy as it can be to get this thing done. And uh, and the results are huge. And we've got clients that have hundreds of their own now video-based scopes work. And when you get to that level, it's a game changer. No question about it. We're seeing incredible ROIs and we're, we're being credited in different companies for really, really awesome return on investments. We'll be sharing more on that, but from you know days off construction, to warranty claims, to callbacks and failed inspections. We're seeing all those numbers get impacted, which is big dollars for, for you guys.